Hello, and welcome to our series about how to build a dynamic email using AmpScript in the Salesforce Marketing Cloud. My name is René Winkelmeyer, and in this fourth video, we will leverage data from non-sendable data extensions to remove hard-coded text values and to make our email multilingual. In the previous video, we externalized our AMP script into a code snippet. We did that so that we have a single location to manage the text content that will be shown in our text block. Now, when we look at our text, there are a couple of elements that are still hard-coded in English, like the greeting or our intro sentences. This is necessarily not a bad thing if your use case is just a one-off and if you're okay to have fixed strings in your text. For me, it is different here. I don't want to maintain hard-coded strings in my email, because if there are text changes, I would have to change my email. I rather want to remove the hard-coded dependency and to have the text content externalized, so that, for example, another team can make text updates as needed without affecting the code here in our email. And to make this happen, I created a new data extension. So let's take a look. I call this data extension for simplicity my text extension. This data extension is non-sendable and I define two attributes. One is my key and the other one is my text. So please bear with me, you know, I'm German, so I'm not always super creative. When we take a look at the records that have been imported, we see the my key and my text values. It's a mapping between what we want to look up, like the greeting and its associated text. Until now, we accessed in our AMP script data from our sendable data extension. As we're now adding more data from another data extension to the mix, we'll have to change our AMP script to actually look up that data. Here in our email, we remove our hard-coded hello string. And in place for that, we're adding the built-in lookup function. This function takes four parameters. First, the name of the data extension that we want to use. Second, the name of the column that contains our text value. And then third and fourth, the attribute name and value that will be used to find the match. Which also means you can basically run a lookup against every attribute in your data extension. Super flexible. We click preview, wait for a second, and there we are. Everything is pulled from our data extension. Now in theory, we can now update all the other hard-coded string occurrences in our code. But as we want to make the email multilingual, let's stick first with our greeting because that way we can set up and test all the mechanics on this implementation first before we change everything. And to actually make our email multilingual, we have to revisit our data extensions. First, let's take a look at our My Subscriber Data extension. I added a new attribute that is named local and it is of type local. And every customer has now an associated local so that we know what language they prefer and in which country they reside. Locales are an international standards mechanism to specify the language and country in a single string, like DEDE -DE for German in Germany, or English in the US with ENUS. And if you don't distinguish between language and country, you could just use a country code like DE or US. I added the same attribute also to the my text extension data extension. And when we look at the records, you can see that we have, for our example, multiple greetings, one for each local. To have our translated text in a single data extension is, well, my decision. Depending on how you want to structure that, you can also create a data extension for each local. That really depends on your custom situation. Now, let's go back to our email and change the lookup to also lookup for the local. The last two parameters of our lookup function are used to actually determine which record in our data extension should be selected. And we can extend this now by adding another pair of parameters, which is first the myLocal attribute from our myText extension data extension, and as value we choose the local attribute from our mySubscriber data extension. So let's click preview so that we can see this in action. And there we go. And as we go through the different data sets, we now see different translations based on the customer's local. That's it for making our email multilingual. You learned how to externalize text into a non-sendable data extension and how to use the AMP script lookup function to read the data from that extension. 
Furthermore, we use that technique to make our email multilingual. And in the next video, we will add more data in form of products to the mix. So, thanks for watching. See you next time.